I'm Scott Brady with Expedition Portal and Overland Journal, and I'm out here with a very special vehicle, the Rivian R1T. This is a much anticipated off-road variant of an EV. Now, what makes it an off-road variant? First of all, it's kind of mid-sized. It's a little bit bigger than a Tacoma, a little bit smaller than a full-size truck, and I can see the advantage of that on the trail today. It's also got nearly a 34 inch tall tire. These are Pirelli all terrains. And then it has four motors, which means that it can turn all four cor corners independently, which means depending on the terrain, it can apply more or less torque to an individual corner, which makes it very unique in this segment. Then it also has a lot of really thoughtful technology that helps it achieve these off-road goals as well. So it has four corner airbags, you can get up to 15 inches of ground clearance, and we needed all of that today on the rocks outside of Sedona. The underside of the vehicle, because it's an EV, is completely smooth, which means it's just a heavy duty skid plate to protect those batteries, uh, but there's really nothing hanging down other than a couple of the lower control arms as well. The other thing that I notice is really good driver control. So everything works with left foot braking, the only time that you really notice that it's an EV is when you're coming up against a ledge and you're trying to get that tire to climb. EVs make their least amount of power when they're kind of at that zero RPM. So you got to plan that a little bit and kind of bounce up of a couple obstacles which we needed to do today. But as long as you're rolling smoothly, it has more than enough power. Then it can also go into rally mode, which lets it loosen up some of the uh, considerations around vehicle stability control and, and traction control allows for a lot more yaw and vehicle movement on the trail. And then you can go into full drift mode, which applies more power to the rear motors, and you can actually drift through a corner Colin McRae style. So let's talk about it as an overland vehicle. It has 1,600 pounds of payload, which is better than most of the vehicles in the segment. It's on par with some of the lighter Ford Rangers. So you have plenty of payload to bring along additional camping equipment. And if you think about it, you're not affected by the amount of fuel you have on board because the batteries weigh the same, whether they're fully charged or empty. And then it has a 300 plus mile range. So I went to one of their most remote campsites that I go to in Arizona on the south rim of the Grand Canyon and I had plenty of range to get back. It just wasn't an issue. But then you've also got a lot of storage space because it doesn't have an engine, it actually has what they call a frunk. So you have the entire spot where you'd normally have an engine, you could pack full of additional gear and get it completely out of the dust. It also has this massive storage compartment that's just aft of the rear doors. Uh, think of it like a pass-through tunnel. And I was able to carry most of my camping gear just in that compartment alone. And again, it's totally sealed from water and dust. In the back, you have a four, just almost a four and a half foot bed, which I found was plenty of room uh, to carry a C6 ground tent, roof tent. Um, I was able to carry a bunch of additional gear uh, and then the, the bed is just long enough to take like an iCamper Mini, which is what I have attached to the factory cross rails right now. It fits just perfect above the bed, but it keeps the tent below the roof line of the vehicle, which doesn't affect your overall range. It also has a factory available tonneau cover that can close from inside the cab or close with a button or even close on the app. You need to be a little bit mindful of that tonneau. I do find that it will stick a little bit if it gets dirty or muddy. So you wanna make sure that it's fairly clean or just kind of leave it either in the closed position or open position if you're gonna be dealing with a lot of dust and mud. The Rivian is also a really comfortable place to spend time. Uh, this has this beautiful kind of almost grayish green leather interior. It also has this beautiful real open pour ashwood dash that's been uh, colored to like a deep mahogany and it just looks very elegant it's it's not a glossy finished wood it's this kind of matte open pour uh, really thoughtful textures and materials throughout it's overall a very minimalist interior which some people may like or they may not for me personally i just think it's beautiful it looks like kind of like a herman miller chair there's only a couple buttons in the entire vehicle there's a couple on the steering wheel that do a whole bunch of controls and then there's two up in the top. One of them is an SOS button, which would work like an OnStar. 
Um, and then there's also your hazards as well. So the hazards is a physical button, but everything else is access to the touch screen, a large tablet style. I do wish that it had Apple CarPlay so that I could run Gaia or Onyx in a large screen. I'm making it work off of the phone right now, or I'd maybe uh, do a, a mount for an iPad, for example, although I suspect that they're gonna allow for that in the future. So overall, out of the gate, they spent a lot of time making sure that this thing performed on road and off. And that I, I think says a lot about the Rivian intent. And we're gonna see the same level of capability out of the SUV. What I do notice though, is that they're a new car company. So there's little things that I find that are maybe more complex than they need to be. For example, the charging port uses this very complex motor to kind of swing open the door. I found that when we got into a lot of mud, I couldn't actually get that thing to open until I cleaned the surface. Uh, think of also if you had a little bit of trail damage to that fender, you may not be able to open the charge port door. I think just a very simple push and open on a hinge would be the way to go. There's also the center console actually has a fairly complex solenoid that opens the center console. Sometimes it doesn't open, sometimes it does. I think it's probably some kind of security feature, but I'd love to see it just be a simple mechanical catch. So there's little things like that that I'm sure we'll see corrected in future editions, uh, but it certainly wouldn't be keep me from buying one. In fact, I would say that I'm asking right now how much it's gonna cost to buy the one behind me. Okay, so let's go through the pros and the cons. The pros, it is a high performance machine. Just under three and a half seconds, zero to 60, 850 horsepower, four motors. You can lower it into sport mode and it feels like it handles like a sports car. Off-road, nearly a 34 inch tall tire, 15 inches of ground clearance. We put it up on the RTI ramp and we got nearly 500, which is better than most stock internal combustion vehicles. It's also great as an overland vehicle too. So it's got 1600 pounds of payload, lots of storage in all these various compartments and cubbies. And it even has camp mode that you can go into and you can push a button and it'll level the vehicle to get your roof tent leveled for camp at night. You can leave on little courtesy lights around camp and even leave your outlets on to charge your devices or to run your fridge. Okay, around cons with EVs, this is across the board. There's kind of a barrier to entry around cost. These vehicles are very expensive, very complex. The battery packs to get 300 plus miles of range are extremely expensive. So you end up with about a $90,000 pickup. So that may affect some buyers. Uh, the other thing too is it's a newer vehicle. So there's some complexities around the car that I'm sure that they'll address in future editions or maybe even with software updates. A lot of them are very minor. None of them would keep me from from buying the vehicle. And I'd also like to see a little bit smaller diameter wheel. I know they need to have a huge brake package for these vehicles, but there are others in the segment that can run an 18 inch wheel. I'd love to see an 18 inch wheel. An 18 inch wheel uh, with a 34 inch tire starts to get close to that double the wheel diameter uh, for the tire size. And I'd love to see a little bit smaller wheel. You'll end up with less uh, wheel damage on the trail and a lot better flotation for a vehicle that weighs almost 8,500 pounds.
thing, like with a little bit, not momentum, but like progressively, it does much better. But the downside is, is it's a stock vehicle, so there's rocks and you can run into it, so it's hard to be like real slow. What do you think? It's different, right? It's different.